The suspiciously inexpensive and reportedly modular CMF Phone 1. A sub-brand of the Nothing Company, the CMF Phone 1 only costs $199, which is hard to believe, especially with its size. It's nearly the same dimensions as my Galaxy S24 Ultra inside of its X-Ray Skin D-Brand grip case. Inside the box is an orange tip SIM card removal tool, but it's not what's in the box that makes the CMF Phone 1 unique. See, CMF stands for Color, Material, and Finish, and they are going hard on that acronym with a selection of replaceable back panels and additional attachable accessories, allowing you to riz up your phone at a moment's notice with the included flathead screwdriver. Each panel is sold separately, but comes with a color match SIM and SD card tray, screws, and a little spinny knob. I don't know if the camera lens housing is metal yet, but you know we're gonna find out. This main attachment point on the back is for a kickstand, lanyard, or magnet wallet case. What we've been doing for the past decade here on the internet is assessing the durability of portable technology. And seeing the visible, tangible screws on the back of this phone is a throwback to the good old days for sure. There is an included screen projector, and once that's removed, we work our way up through the most scale of hardness. We know plastic scratches at a 2 or 3, and sapphires at an 8 or 9. And while the CMF phone isn't advertising any specific brand of tempered glass, we still only start seeing scratches at a level 6, with deeper grooves at a level 7. The front-facing 16-megapixel camera is tucked under and protected by that same front glass, with a super-thin earpiece speaker grill. Moving our way to the right side of the CMF phone 1, we discover plastic with a small dash of metal power button. The top of the phone is more plastic with a tiny noise canceling microphone hole. The left side has even more plastic and a metal volume rocker. Moving to the bottom, we see a plastic SIM and SD card tray with a 33 watt USB-C charging port that's capable of 5 watt reverse charging and a single loudspeaker grill. Turns out the dual camera lens is made from metal, kind of nifty. It's still mind-blowing that this phone is $200. I assume the cost savings come from the upper camera not really being a camera, but more of a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The single main camera has a 50 megapixel sensor and a plastic covered single LED flash off to the side. With, and I'm still kind of shook by this, there are real large functional metal screws on the back. We'll see how modular things get in a second, but one thing you might not know is that each and every lightning bolt flying through a stormy sky contains between 200 and 1200 kilowatt hours worth of energy, meaning that a single lightning strike could fully charge up about 15 electric vehicles or 60,000 smartphones near instantaneously. Obviously, there's a few other minor laws of physics at play, like dealing with the 50,000 degree temperatures, which is five times hotter than the surface of the sun, but where there's a will, there's a way. Taking off the back panel is actually a tad harder than I anticipated. It's definitely an integrated, well-fit component, and not just an afterthought. It's extremely disappointing to see that the battery is not replaceable. In fact, there's even a warning for us to cease disassembling without proper authorization. The rear panel looks molded and milled, which is interesting. And I don't know who is authorized to give authorization, since where I'm from, and this is true, the FTC has ruled that warranty void stickers are purely decoration. However, as much as I would like to open her up right now, we must first finish the durability test. Reinstalling the rear panel takes just about as much time as removing it, with the circular knob, four screws, and really tiny screwdriver. The light green color is kind of refreshing, and it looks like 200 bucks gets you a 6.7 inch 1080p 120Hz AMOLED display that lasts for about 20 seconds under the heat from my lighter. Teaching us once again, nothing has really good screens on really inexpensive devices. The ultimate test of structural rigidity, though, is the bin test. We've seen $1,000 smartphones fail and $100 phones survive, so price is never an indicator of how strong a device might be. And in this case, when bent from the screen side, the CMF Phone 1 survives and appears to be functioning like normal. When bent from the back, there is a slight bendy curve that starts near the upper screw above the volume rocker, but there is no cracking, creaking, or catastrophic damage. The CMF Phone 1 survives the durability test. I imagine the back panel being physically bolted to the frame helps from a structure perspective, but there's only one way to find out for sure, and we gotta see what corners were cut to make this thing so inexpensive. I'll remove the four user replaceable screws and twist that knob completely off, and we can see on its own that the back panel isn't all that strong. Yeah, there are more mechanics at play when it's all bolted together, but it really is just a simple piece of plastic with metal buttons held in place with little rubber straps. 
As we bypassed the warnings printed on the black plastic sheet over the battery, I also realized that this is where the services of our tiny flathead screwdriver end and an actual screwdriver is required. The modularity verbiage of the CMF Phone 1 is purely for aesthetic accessorizing and unfortunately not related to repairability or upgradability. The CMF Phone 1 is no Fairphone 5. However, with that sticker gone, we can see that the internal frame rails are rather thick, appropriately placed beams of solid metal. Now, surviving the bin test makes a lot more sense. With five Phillips head screws at the bottom and seven screws at the top removed, we can take out the plastics. Now, I kind of goofed up with this bottom piece of plastic. There is a sixth screw hidden under the plastic washer near the screw knob, just so you know if you're attempting this yourself. The top plastic comes off much easier after the clips on the sides are unlatched and there is nothing in all of her glory. Or I guess, color, material, and finish in all of her glory. The naming scheme is interesting. I'll unplug the battery, just like a little Lego, and lift up the side plastic strips on the battery adhesion sticker, and then... Thumbs up for that. The 5,000 mAh battery can come away from the phone. Honestly, I think it would be pretty awesome to see how these batteries are manufactured. Leave a comment down below if you think nothing should let us see how these things are made. And under that battery adhesion sticker, which is awesome, we get the glimpse of a copper vapor chamber reaching up under the motherboard. As I was unplugging the extension ribbons from the main board, I noticed a little tiny underscreen fingerprint scanning camera. I totally forgot to test the fingerprint scanner when she was assembled, so I hope no one loses sleep over that. You can see the circular hole where it peeps through the pixels to scan your digits. With a few more ribbons popped off just like little Legos, we can pull up the lower circuit board. This board has the expandable memory card slot and SIM tray, where you can add an extra 2 terabytes of storage into this $200 phone, which sounds amazing. The SD card slot is perched right next to the cutest little circular vibrator you've ever seen, which probably means there's not a whole lot of punch. Moving up to the motherboard, I'll unplug the signal wires and take off one more screw in the upper left corner, which allows the motherboard to come free from the phone. There is quite a lot of thermal paste lathered over the backside, and as we know, happy thermal paste is the best thermal paste. The upper 2 megapixel depth camera does not have any optical image stabilization, and surprisingly enough, the main 50 megapixel camera also does not have any OIS, just EIS, which is definitely something to be aware of. Optical image stabilization is kind of a big deal if you're into taking videos. The front camera doesn't have OIS either, but besides that one HTC phone from 8 years ago, no front cameras ever have OIS. Honestly, besides the missing hardware camera stabilization, and along with having no zoom or wide angle camera perspectives, and that little tiny vibrator, this HTC Phone 1 appears to be quite the catch. I imagine that CMF is making near zero or even negative amounts of money on this thing in order to gain market share, but that's good news for customers. The CMF Phone 1 gets a thumbs up from me. It survived everything I threw at it and lived to tell the tale. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.